Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Yes, we're going to be covering garrisoning. So I hope you guys have been looking forward to it. We haven't covered it yet on this channel. So we're going to go over garrisoning first. And then if you guys enjoyed it, we'll make a separate video on rallying. Hello everyone, so yes, we're going to go over garrisoning. What hell is garrisoning? A lot of people might not know this format or this term because they're living under a rock or they're new to the game, right? So basically garrisoning, what is it? It's a very simple term used to defend an objective. So for example, you can put troops inside this pass if you're in the alliance and you can reinforce it and by reinforcing it you are garrisoning and holding and protecting slash defending that structure this also applies in game modes like roots of war so if you go into the roots of war um, area you check the rules out like the buildings stuff like your uh, holes all of these can be reinforced as well as even the trees and your outposts if you really care about it but all of these structures basically require a player to basically become the leader of the troops. So what happens is when you're a garrison leader, your march or your legion, so for example, if we deploy out our garrison, which we would be running, which would be Madeline and Nika, what we would do is make sure we have the right stuff on. So if you are garrisoning at the moment, this is the only garrison support styled um, artifact it's the combat the rally one so make sure you do have this equipped at the moment until better ones do get equipped just due to the stats right we get some really nice stats for having this equipped and what we want to do is basically when you when you have your march out this is obviously going to go into the structure and what happens is if you're the garrison leader any troop that enters that pass that by means, you know, any of your T4 players and so on go underneath you and their troops hide and basically use your buffs as the garrison lead, which is very, very important, right? Um, hopefully, obviously, you guys know from plenty of footage in the past when we've seen, you know, everyone fighting over past fights and stuff like that and what we need to talk about, right? So what what garrisons is there in the game that's the real question right basically that that little intro opening there hopefully gives everyone on the same playing field right i want to try and get everyone just on the same baseline so we all understand what the hell a garrisoning is right so the whole point of a garrison and especially a garrison leader is to make sure his two pairings are the strongest two pairings he can use within that role and you are trying to basically get the best value trade while you are defending, right? So there's a few garrisons in the game, which sounds a bit crazy, but we're going to go from the worst work up to the best. Um, the first one is going to be Bakar. So Bakar is a really weak garrison at the moment. He, he's got some really good basically stats if you want to call it for what you want in a garrison so for example the um attack reduction is really good and whenever he's in you know a stronghold or in a city he's going to gain that 15 percent hero skill damage um take a reduction so this is a really good city defense garrison right but if you're trying to garrison like a pass and stuff like that this this just isn't what we're talking about right we don't we don't want that right so what what we want is a garrison lead that can basically sustain damage as well as deal a bunch of damage. That That's the main criteria we have when we look at garrison leaders. And you'll notice there's some garrisons that do get used, like Garward. There's still other garrisons that do get used. You can even see Hosk being used as a garrison lead. Even though he's got the rally talents, it's just these stats for a garrison is very, very powerful, right? Giving all the units inside a 20% attack bonus, HP and damage dealt throughout that fight when it keeps triggering is very, very punching, right? So the very first pairing is going to be Bakar. It's going to be Bakar with Garwood. This is the I would call the worst garrison you can put together. And the reason why this is the worst garrison you can put together is due to Garwood, right? Garwood is a garrison hero, but the one problem which everyone should know from maybe games like Rise of Kingdoms is the healing. 
the amount of healing that you're doing with Garward as a garrison lead, especially if you're trying to defend your own city, causes you to take more troops. So you lose more and more troops because you're healing back those troops, hopefully, but it doesn't. It just goes back and gives the guy more merits, gives him better trades, and it just feeds the enemy players. So Garward, honestly, is not a good... Um, Garrison lead, you'll realize that honestly that people can out damage Goward. So one thing we do do is Goward, oh what's a Goward, a Bakar and Hosk. This is a better combination if you have this combination. Why? Again, Bakar deals a ton of damage, he's got some good stats. Infantry is mainly what's used for garrisons, which is good. But on top of that is the bleed. Like this bleed affects the rally leader. So whenever the rally leader's troops gets the 50% worth of remaining, just like yours do in the garrison, his will start to bleed. So he should start losing 200 damage every second for three seconds and then it refreshes, right? So it's a really powerful ability, but there's better, right? We know there is better. So we're gonna go upgrade. So Madeline is a way better, just commander in general for Garrison. She provides all of the defenses that she want in a shield. She gives you 20% attack buff, which is powerful. She also increases the physical damage dealt bonus, which is massive in a garrison. Then you also have a counter-attack damage bonus, again, super massive in a garrison. And then a 15% HP bonus. This is very, very critical when it comes to garrison as well. More troops having more health is going to allow you to sustain better. So you can imagine already these three skills are super powerful for garrison leading on Madeline. Her fourth skill just gives her damage, but if you're a garrison leader, you should have all of these heroes that we are talking about expertise. And the reason why, as you can imagine, you need the most damage, you need the best of the best to defend those zones, right? And you guys know this if you're a T5 player, or maybe if you're a T4 player, you should know this already from this video, right? Garrison is a very specific job. And if you do wanna be a garrison leader, by all means, you can aim to do that in the future but in the early game honestly just let your t5 players do it it sounds crazy but just let them do it but this skill again for garrison reducing all damage taken by 10 percent makes her super powerful in a garrison you can run so different amounts of trees on her like a tank pvp tree or a pvp heavy tank tree it's up to you but we are going to showcase a single talent tree and it's the most cracked one that you can go for anyway in the future. But Madeline is a very powerful garrison leader. And the thing is with Madeline is you can use Madeline with Bakar. Madeline Bakar is a very, very, very good city defending um March. It allows you to defend yourself. It allows Bakar to deal a bunch of damage. It is honestly a really powerful combo for a city defense. You get everything you want basically without going too crazy and you're using epic heroes and a legendary hero from the lucky wheel which is very easy to obtain right. But we can upgrade it. We can upgrade this to Hosk again and if you do Madeline Hosk this is a super powerful combo even at 5111 on the husk it is going to do a ton of damage to a lot of players especially with a maxed out awakened um madeline but if you have awakened husk with awakened madeline jesus the amount of critical counter attack damage you are dealing is just disgusting when it comes into pvp garrison combat so i really do enjoy that one but we're going to move on to the best of the best and everyone should know this by now, but the best of the best garrison right now is a Madeline Nika match. This, this, this match is just so powerful. Even with the uh, thirty percent physical damage now peacekeeping talent, that is just wasted. It is so good together because you have such the most tankiest hero in the game that does the best stats and damage against other players as an infantry hero. And then you pairing them up with honestly the second best 
damage dealing hero for inventory, right? Because you've got a 1500 damage nuke, you've got a 30% HP reduction on that unit, which is ridiculous ridiculous when it comes into garrison combat because stats matter so much when you are trying to defend and then you have the infantry again attack the march speed isn't too relevant but the attack is then you gain again some hero skill damage bonus which is very nice plus now 20 percent counter attack damage which is synergistic with that um, counter attack damage from your Madeline now. And then finally, as you can imagine, Nika has a better version of the exact same skill as Bakar. So this is just a way stronger version of the exact same skill. This triggers every two seconds. It deals 500 damage with the 50% chance of it. And it just melts your opponents. So if you're wondering, you know, maybe in the future we can might might see some cavalry garrisons. Who knows? Who knows? But at the moment, the main garrison meta is infantry-based combat, and then the rallies are generally either marksmen or cavalry. They use one of the other, depending on the situation, right? So I hope that kind of covers like the garrison basics, fundamentals, as well as pairings and commanders that you can use so far as a garrison leader as well as combinations right and we're going to set them up so if we go to our wall here we can see i've got a nika madeline setup so if we click here and click on the nika i'm going to switch them around so we have the madeline nika this is just a way stronger combination then we're going to have bakar nika on the secondary we're going to do also here a Madeline and Hosk just so as a third runner up in case we have them at our disposal. But then we're going to do a Hosk and Bakar one too. And this is basically all the keyers we've just been talking about in different configurations. And it just allows you at any given time, say Madeline and our Nika is out. Obviously, we won't be able to use number two, so we can just jump straight away and use number four, which is Hosk and Bakar, which is going to be our last go-to. So you can see a nice little configuration of all them heroes there. And now, what we're going to do to is showcase the talent page. So what we're going to do is use the Route to War Battle Sync system. Again, guys, if you're trying to create a talent page and just figure out some talent pages before, for actually going deep dive and investing those points into them. Guys, use Battlesync. This is such a great system. Honestly, you are able, as you can see, to click any of the heroes, click talent, go to the imported one here, and go to your heart to contend. But what we're going to go over is the garrison. And I'm going to break it down into two, the first section here, and then we're going to go into the next section, which is the crazy side, right? So the first section is the, the talents, right? And how do talents work for garrison? Because garrison combat, guys, is vastly different to your open field. Because in garrison combat, you have to think you are generally either inside the pass or you're inside of the city. You are generally also as close teleported to that objective, meaning march speed is not relevant. You do not need march speed here. In this, you need as many stats bang for your book as you can, right? So with that, the foundational talents do change for garrison trees. And this is very important. This is probably going to be the exact same as well for rallying. But we're going to see that and we're going to do some investigation for that video in a separate one, right? But when it comes to garrisons here, we're going to take the overall attack, defense and health. As you can imagine, these are all stats that we're going to need. We're going to take all of them. We're not going to use March Speed. We can ignore it, right? Nice and simple. So then we enter Mighty Power for our Bakar. And this is a really cool one. It allows Bakar to deal 2% more skill damage and has an extra 10% chance to deal 20 extra rage. Really cool little generation, right? So... From here, what I'm going to do is simple. I'm going to go for health, defense, and counterattack damage. Why? Because in my opinion, you do not need attack. Attack is so already given. You have so much attack in the game that the way to win these is actually being more tankier than your opponent. If your units have higher resistances and higher health 
than your opponents. If they deal 100 damage, but your troops have 150 damage, guess what? They take two hits to kill. But if they units only have, you know, 100 health and you are dealing 100 damage because you've not increased your hero skill damage now, guess what? You're still getting that one-to-one -one trade. So it's perfect, right? So that's the way my brain and the way I am approaching Garrison here. So I hope that makes sense to you guys right now. So we're going to take 2% extra health, 2% extra defense. And then you get your first branch. And this is the really important branch. And I think if this is in the future, when we get more garrison-based talent trees for heroes, I think garrison repost is the best one. Dealing 10% extra counter-attack damage is absurd. Especially if you compare this with that Nika, you compare it with a Madeline that's giving you 20% extra. This is already now going into 30% counter-attack damage, which is obscene when you're looking at the numbers. Then you also have the choice for normal attack damage or you can have the Watchtower Defense. I'm gonna tell you guys now, this repression talent here is a trap. You will never take this. Never, never, never take this. Watchtowers deal the most negligent amount of damage in the game and they disappear like that. So even if you gave them a 25% defense increase, this is a wasted stat. It's more beneficial to have either the 10% extra counter attack damage or you could have the 10% more normal attack damage. Either one, I believe, will be better depending on the pairing that you're going to be having. In the next two is the most interesting part of the, honestly, the talent build is this first talent choice. And this is, and the reason why is you can pick Fawn Barrier or Fair Defense. Fawn Barrier, in my eyes, if, if you're a T5 player defending structures, is the best of the best talent. Why? It is. Always, you got to remember, always, 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 when you're a rally leader, garrison leader, you are fighting at max power, max units, max tech, max everything, right? And because of that, you do not care about fair defense. You just don't care about it. So you care about trying to benefit and punish your opponents. So whenever you launch a counter-attack damage now, you have a 10% chance to inflict gloom, and a defense break, which is reducing their attack and defense by 8% for three seconds. This is crucial, right, for a T5 player. However, this is where the big however comes in. I understand some players watching this video might be free to play players, right? And you're looking for the city defense. If you're looking for a city defense tree, fair defense would be the one to go. Why? When you're serving as a garrison captain, you can force an enemy rallied army to into a fair fight. In a fair fight, all unit skills are disabled and the attributes of the infantry, cavalry, marksman and magic units of the same level will be adjusted to the same values. Meaning, if you are a low player and you are getting rallied by someone, you can basically say, right, stop. I am not taking any skill damage or skill effects from your heroes, but if you've sent 1 million T4 to fight me, you now need to fight 2 million of my T4. And that's how it's gonna be. It's gonna be 2 million troops versus 1 million troops, smash heads, nothing else, right? And you can see here, even the unit advantage system will be adjusted to the same values. This does not mean the base stats of those units will change. It just means instead of being a 20% increase in damage and obviously defense of those, it'll go to a zero, zero. So everyone's on the same playing field. So for me, I think fair defense is a really good talent, a very powerful talent for players that are not T5. So I think this would be your choice here. And if you're a garrison lead, as you can imagine, as the talent page shows, we go for Fawn Barrett, right? From here, we're gonna go into the crack section. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you now, guys, if you've made it so far through this video in the talent page, this is the cracked section of the talent tree, right? Because as you can imagine, if you're going down the garrison talent, 
you are getting so many buffs. And this is the talent tree you're going to take, right? And at first, I'm going to explain where I would go. And then we're going to obviously reel it back in, right? So here, you get so many stats, it's unreal. So here, I'm going to gain the 10% extra skill damage. Why, why do we care about this, right? It's because here, we're going to take this later on. You could take this instead, but this gives us a little bit punching power as you're going to see in a moment right we're going to need that punching power because this is a bit of a i think useless talent this might be good for a free play player to put one point in just to come back with fair defense but this might be in the future something that you're going to see but at the moment flank protection isn't good right if you see yourself getting rallied by three different rallies in a pass flank protection is going to be perfect right but until then i wouldn't use it but 5 out of 5 on Garrison Synergy, that's where we're going to put our first 5 points. Then we're going to do the Rage Generation, because now whenever we have a, time, uh, a fight, we have 10% chance to gain 100 Rage. Yes, you heard that right, which is absurd. We also, when serving as a Garrison Captain, being hit with a normal attack has also a 10% chance to gar um, gain 100 additional Rage. That is right, boys. We have nearly 200 Rage we're gaining here which is just crazy. And then I honestly opted out and picked into Formidable, right? This is a bit of a crazy one. This is more damage, but I can see for all intents and purposes taking Sacred Realm. Sacred Realm gives you a little bit of healing for your match, but if you've got the Garrison Artifact, I reckon Sacred Realm is a trap and you do not need this talent because you would rather deal 10% more hero skill damage and take advantage of this rage and the amount of troops that you have with all of that damage, right? Then what you do is the following. You put five points into Tough Garrison. Now you take 10% extra, 10% uh, less um, hero skill damage nuts this is just insane this is the, the most amount of stats you can get in any trees guys then you can also when serving as a garrison captain take five percent less flash damage like yeah okay we're gonna take that every single time and then on top of this whenever you're serving as a garrison captain guess what we're dealing five percent more damage and that is everything right it is absurd how much this tree is just cracked and how many stats it is giving you compared to trying to go down the infantry route or trying to go down this intimidation that's only going to give you 4% hero skill damage. Well, guess what? We're gaining the 10% here. You know, we're gaining 5% more damage here, which is including hero skill damage, guys. It's including hero skill damage. So this is absolutely cracked and you have two points left. I would leave them up to you. For me, I actually put them in the Garrison Determination to give us an extra bit of tanking capabilities, right? So as you can see, I've taken tankiness at the top. I went for offense at the end. And then as you can see, we rounded it up here, right? We rounded it up with the off tank capabilities in the Garrison Tree. And I honestly think that is the best garrison tree in the game. And I think if you have the garrison talent tree available in the future to potentially brand new legendary heroes, you know, you can imagine Rise of Kingdoms, right? Rise of Kingdoms has Jadwiga, you know, you have your Zenobias, your YSS, right? People with that garrison specific talent tree will be running a talent build very similar to this, I believe, in the future because of how powerful it is obviously maybe in the future there might be a meta when you're going to get rallied two three you know surrounded times then we're going to change it and maybe put the two points here to take 30 percent less damage right but until that happens i reckon this is the best of the best garrison talent tree this is honestly what i reckon is going to help you guys if you're looking to garrison help you out so i hope you've enjoyed this video i know it's been a very long one but i've explained the basics and fundamentals of garrisoning who generally should be garrisoning passes and the structures so if you've not guessed it t5 players with max commanders are your go-to but if you're garrison leading and you're looking for garrison tips on your city 
obviously this has got you covered also we've gone over the talent build as well for your bakar if you're going to run bakar you can run that exact same talent build on garward if you're looking for a talent build for nico or madeline i'm going to keep them under wraps because they are top tips right they're secret right now so it's all then we might do another video for those if this hits maybe 50 likes or something we'll do a video specific for the madeline nika garrison the talent tree and how powerful it actually is so if you've enjoyed the video smash like comment and subscribe but until the next one stay safe stay sneaky and peace out everyone